integrations and constant coordinate lines and surfaces. First, we'll talk about integrations, and then we will move on to constant coordinate lines and areas. The utility of the constant coordinate lines and areas is it shows us the range of possibilities of shapes that we can integrate on that actually have very simple integrals. So we might have some complicated shape in mind that we have to perform a line integral, and we'll look at that and realize that it's actually one of these constant lines and areas, and we can make the math a lot simpler. Integrations. I'm going to identify six types of integrations that we tend to do in electromagnetics. The first is an ordinary line integral. That means we have a starting point and an end point that are not necessarily the same, and we integrate along some line. And what that path is can be anything at this point. Now, later when we talk about the constant lines and areas, We'll look at these, and if we see if this was like an arc, for example, well, that might be a constant line in cylindrical coordinates, and it would simplify the math if we went to cylindrical coordinates. But right now, we're just talking about an ordinary line integral where we're integrating something along the length of this line. And if there's nothing in this integral, we'll just get the total length of this line because we're integrating the differential length from the start to the end. Now we can also talk about a closed contour line integral. Mathematically, there's really no difference between these two other than the start and end point is the same for a closed contour line integral. So a closed contour line integral encloses some area within that and it's forming a loop. Now, because it's a loop, that doesn't mean this has to be circular. It could be square or elliptical or something arbitrarily shaped like this. Now, if we can, we would like it to be shaped something like our constant lines that we'll talk about, constant coordinate lines that we'll talk about in a little bit, because then we know the math can become simple. We then move on to an ordinary surface integral. So this will be a double integral where we're integrating something over a surface. And if we're integrating essentially nothing other than differential surface over the surface, what we end up calculating is total surface area. Now, if that surface encloses a volume perfectly, we would call that a closed contour surface integral. And there's very little difference mathematically between these two other than the closed contour surface integral perfectly encloses a volume. But otherwise, mathematically, it's the same thing. We then have an ordinary volume integral. This is a triple integral where we're integrating something throughout some volume. So if we just integrate differential volume, we get overall volume here. Now, looking at the pattern, we might ask, is there such a thing as a closed contour volume integral? Well, since we only live in a three-dimensional world in electromagnetics, this would not make sense. But if we were talking about pure mathematics, yes, we could be in a four, five, six, or 27-dimensional world, and in which case there would be such a thing as a closed contour volume integral. But for us, restricted to three dimensions, it doesn't make sense to talk about a closed contour volume integral. Here's a visualization of integrating the volume of a cube. First, we integrate it along one axis, then we're integrating along another, and then we integrate along the third. And in the end, we fill in the volume of a cube in this case. We'll watch this one more time and then move on. We can do a similar thing and visualize a cylindrical type of integration. First, we integrate along an axis, then we integrate along phi, and then we integrate along z, and eventually integrate an entire cylinder. So here we're integrating along the x-axis, then phi, and then we integrate 
z. All right, let's move on. A integrating through the volume of a sphere. Again, we'll integrate along what axis? That would be r, then we integrate phi, and then we integrate theta, and we eventually fill in the entire volume of a sphere. So first we're integrating along r, then phi, and then theta. For fun, here we're integrating through a sphere, but in a different order. So first we're integrating along r, then phi, then theta. And we can see we fill the sphere in in that order. Then if we integrate along r, then theta, then phi, we're still filling in a sphere, but in a different order. So any of these work and we may choose one or the other just due to convenience. More on the line integrals, and here we're getting more into how we'll be doing line integrals in electromagnetics. So a line integral in electromagnetics tends to be some vector function dot product with the differential length, and in which case A would be an electric or magnetic field. So here I'm showing just some vector function A in red, and we're integrating from A to B along some line integral. This dot product, what it's doing is it's calculating the component of A in the direction of L. So in fact, if this field were completely perpendicular to this line, our line integral will end up being zero. There has to be some component of that vector tangential to that line so that we don't get zero. Now the closed contour line integral, it's the exact same thing mathematically other than our start and end point is the same point, so we perfectly enclose some surface area. Surface integrals. In electromagnetics, surface integrals tend to be integrating a vector dot product with a differential surface. So what this is doing is it's getting the component of that vector function that is perpendicular to that surface. This is the concept of flux, and so we're integrating the flux of this vector field A through that surface, or how much of that vector field punches straight through the surface that is perpendicular to that surface. And so an ordinary surface integral and a closed surface integral is essentially the same thing mathematically other than the closed surface integral perfectly encloses some volume. And volume integrals, as we mentioned, a closed volume integral doesn't really make any sense in a three-dimensional world, but we still definitely have our ordinary volume integrals. One area that will apply this, we will integrate charge density throughout a volume to get total charge. Constant coordinate lines and areas. So we've talked about a bunch of different integrations, and when we get to Maxwell's equations, we'll see that we'll have to do these integrations around the edges of devices and things like that. So what we hope is that our devices take on shapes that are conveniently expressed by some coordinate system. If they're not, it may not even be solvable analytically, and we'd have to do it numerically. So we will restrict ourselves in this class to what we would say are canonical shapes. That is shapes that conform to one of our coordinate systems. And so these constant coordinate surfaces are the simplest of shapes because we just choose a coordinate system, set one of our values to a constant, and now we're integrating across a surface. And it turns out the math when we do that is quite easy. So in Cartesian coordinates, here are our constant coordinate surfaces. So for example, if we set X to be a constant, we're integrating in this red plane, and that's very easy to do. We just integrate over Y and Z. Similarly, if we have a surface that has a constant value of Y, that's this green surface. And we're just integrating over X and Z in that case. And then if we have Z being a constant, we're integrating over this blue plane, 
where we're integrating just over X and Y. Here's our constant coordinate surfaces in cylindrical coordinates. So if we have a constant value of rho, we're integrating over a cylinder. So you can imagine if we're analyzing a coaxial cable or something like that, that would have cylindrical symmetry. We will probably adopt cylindrical coordinates and use that constant coordinate surface to do that. If phi is constant, we're talking about integrating over this plane that is at some angle phi. And then if our Z is a constant, we're integrating over the circular area in blue. Here's our constant coordinate surfaces in spherical coordinates. So if our radial vector or radial position component R is a constant, we're integrating over a sphere. So we could imagine maybe having a spherical charge distribution, or maybe we choose to wrap this surface around something else and we perform some integration of flux. So that's a very easy integral to do. If we set theta equal to zero, we're integrating over a cone shape. So we can imagine that might start representing an antenna type of a shape. If phi is constant, now we're integrating over this circular plane shape. We can have constant coordinate lines. This happens when we set two of our coordinates to be constants. So for example, if we set Y and Z to be constants, we're integrating just along the X direction and we'd be integrating along the red line. If we fix X and Z, we're integrating in the Y direction. That's this green line we would be integrating down. So you could imagine doing these kind of integrals down wires. If we fix X and Y, now we have a one dimensional integral over Z and we're integrating along this line. Here's our constant coordinate lines from cylindrical coordinates. If we fix phi and z, we're integrating in the rho direction. So it's a straight line, but at some angular orientation in the xy plane. If we fix rho and z naught, we're integrating over phi, and we're actually integrating around a circle. So you can imagine a loop antenna or some kind of loop wire we would do that for. And if we fix rho and phi, we're integrating in the z direction. And just like Cartesian coordinates, we're integrating on a vertical line. And our constant coordinate lines in spherical coordinates. If we fix theta and phi and we integrate only along r, we're integrating along some line and some orientation, but passing through the origin of our coordinates. If we fix R and phi, we're integrating along theta, and we're integrating along some kind of arc that would conform to a, a sphere, I guess. If we fixed R and theta and integrated only along phi, now we're integrating along some arc in, the, in another plane. 